Welcome guys to this episode of Aussie Shed Talk. Uh, in this episode, I will be doing a review on my uh, Sleeper HGU. Um, just basically covering the updates since the first video we did. Um, there was a really good response from all you guys um, on basically how much you enjoyed the ute um, and the episode um, and you wanted to know more about it. So in this episode, I'll be going into more depth uh, about all the work I carried out and all the changes since that first video. Um, so this one's a bit of a sad one because the old girl's actually up for sale. Um, so uh, if you know anyone that's looking for a tough ute um, or yourself, if you're looking for something tough, um, hit us up on social media and um, we'll organise for you to come have a look. But um, yeah, hope you enjoy the episode, guys. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, so I actually bought this ute uh, running and driving. Um, it was completely stock uh, and it had a Repco recondition motor in it, so it wasn't actually the original motor. Someone had put a 186 in it um, and it was a really good engine. I drove it around for six months the way it was, but uh, I just had that itch to um, turn it into a sleeper. The original plan was to basically um, do a quick sleeper build, um, put a 9 inch under it, turbo 400 and uh, a tough engine in it. Um, but when I got it home I realised there was a lot more rust in it um, and basically the build blew out. Um, I ended up spending six years building the car, um, put it on a rotisserie, had the front end off it, cut all of the rust out, put all new floors in. Um, after all the bodywork was finished I started on building the LS1. Um, once I built that, I could start test fitting uh, the engine and modifying what I needed to modify to make it all fit. This was before all the LS1 conversion kits were out, so there was a lot of uh, hours in the custom work um, in making the sump and exhaust manifolds. Um, a mate of mine, Joel, at CDI Motorsport, did all the custom work um, and also built a custom twin three-inch exhaust um, and he did a killer job. Uh, if you're after a custom, any custom metal work, hit up Joel uh, at CDI. Once the engine um, was fit, I installed new bushes throughout the car um, and all, all new suspension bushes and after all uh, the rush repairs, painted uh, underneath the underbody with um, sound deadening, um, two layers of that. I then installed the drive line uh, and sent it off to get trimmed. Um, before trimming, we installed sound deadening under the carpet, roof lining, doors and back past the shelf just to get rid of some of that uh, loud noise, V8 noise, uh, and some of the heat too. It makes a big difference with the heat. So uh, now we'll go into the specifics. All right, now to my favorite part of the car and uh, probably the part that took me the longest to get looking schmick. Um, there is countless amount of hours um, and work in this engine bay. Um, yeah, we spent a long time trying to make it look neat and uh, I think we did a pretty good job. But um, I'll start off with the engine. So it's an LS1, uh, built myself. Uh, it's got a custom sump, Moroso oil pump, Mesier water pump, strengthened push rods, LS7 lifters, LS2 lifter guides, custom grind cam, uh, it's a 233-238 cam tech cam, beehive valve springs, race work, race works catch can, Holly low rise manifold, Holly HP 750 carby, all Teflon 200 series hoses for fuel lines and transmission lines, Holly fuel pump that's underneath the car near the fuel tank, uh, and I've also got a Holly um, fuel regulator to bring that pressure down to about 5 psi for the carby. Uh, it, I've just recently fitted some Holly, really nice looking Holly rocker covers to hide the, the ugly standard LS1 rocker covers. Um, and I've also just had the custom extractors um, power, uh, HPC coated again because um, when I got it done the first time it didn't last too long. So they look really good now. Um, the other stuff under the engine bay, um, you'll see all the wiring's hidden. Um, it's got wiper motor relocation kits, so the wiper motor's up under the dash now. Um, and it's got a rebuilt 
steering box in it that I just rebuilt about six months ago. Um, other than that, everything's blue plated. Um, so all the modifications on the car are all on the blue plate. Um, so yeah, it's ready to register and cruise. Horsepower is put down through a fully built reverse pattern turbo 400 built by Mark at Sunshine Coast Chop Shop. Custom three and a half inch tail shaft with strange yokes built by Farrow Shafting, and up the back, a short and nine inch diff out of a Ford Bronco that has ultra nine chromoly axles, chromoly stub axles, three seven motive gears, and a top cog, top cog LSD. The diff was put together with new bearings, new gears, and the new sender only six months ago by Topcog. Both the transmission and diff were built at the same time and only have about 200 to 300 Ks on them. As for brakes, it has a Wilwood mass cylinder and proportioning valve, all custom made stainless hard lines with rubber lines uh, to the brakes. The front has slotted HQ rotors with HQ calipers and the rear has HQ drums. All right, so with the interior, um, I got it all retrimmed, um, basically back to factory, how they were from the factory. Um, the bloke that retrimmed it for me did an amazing job. Um, he did little subtle things like um, move where the stitching was uh, on the seat just to make it look a bit neater, um, and also retrimmed the door cards a little bit differently to how they were in the factory, but um, looks very similar and they look bloody awesome. Um, so all the wiring has been hidden up under the dash. Um, as you'll see, there's a, a control board with all of the uh, MSD module and fuse box and all that stuff. Um, all of the gauges, so basically um, with the cluster, instrument cluster, we modified it to look like a GDS cluster. Um, a made of mine, fiberglass and all, um, and I put Autometer Cruiser Series gauges in them. Um, they just seem to suit the old school look um, and they work really well. Um, so with the gauges I've got oil pressure, fuel level, um, taco and also uh, coolant temperature or engine temperature as well. Um, so I run a JVC uh, Bluetooth head unit in it, um, ratchet shifter for the turbo 400 and uh, other than that it's all, all the dash has been resprayed, back to factory colour, um, glove box lid's been resprayed. So the exterior has surface rust um, on the original white paint. Um, she's definitely a survivor. Um, there's no uh, major rust in the actual body itself. The front guards have a little bit of rust in them, um, but I left it because it uh, all adds to the sleeper look. Um, Every six months since I've had it, I've applied Penetrol to the, to the paint just to preserve the surface rust. Um, so the ute has a new twine cover, which was made at the same time as the interior was retrimmed. It also has the original Belmont badges, and I've put some RACV badges to suit the sleeper look as well. One of the changes since the first video we did, and this is something that a lot of uh, our viewers commented on, was that uh, a sleeper is not a sleeper unless it has a set of stock wheels on it. So it now has um, HQ steelies on it and um, I've had the rear centers moved to suit the short nine inch diff. Uh, and these wheels really do look great on the ute. All right guys, well that's it for the HG ute. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, she's had a fair few changes since the last video. Um, but yeah, it's time for her to go to a new home. Uh, definitely going to miss her, but um, on to bigger and better things and uh, I'll build something cool in the future. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and um, we'll uh, hopefully see you at cruising.